All right, it's early April. It's very chilly outside, I think 40 something degrees, and it's raining out. Perfect day to go play in water. Today, we gotta clean out these rain barrels. <laughs> it's cold and chilly outside. So the reason why we scrub these out every spring and usually in the fall too is just over the year, just gunk will just build up inside the barrel. So I always like to want at least once a year, many times twice a year, again in the spring and then again in the fall, I just like to get the barrels, scrub them out real good, rinse them out real good. That way if I do have to use the water in an emergency situation, at least it's, uh, at least it doesn't have a bunch of bacteria or whatever other stuff growing into it. And it'll be a lot easier on my Berkey if I have to run it through. And one of the things I've learned is I need to get a new nozzle for my spray, uh, for my hose. That's uh, losing half the uh, pressure just uh, spitting out the sides. Well, that's what I get for buying something cheap to begin with. And one of the things you might notice is the closer that I get to the first flush system, the dirtier the water gets. Even with that first flush system, just junk that's in the air, stuff that washes off the roof, still ends up into the uh, barrel. So the first barrel that it feeds into, that water's probably going to be pretty crappy. The next barrel, it's just got some stuff. It's not too bad looking, but it's just got some stuff floating in the bottom. and. These two barrels weren't bad at all. Now all of the water could be ran through some kind of first filter to get rid of the big stuff and then ran through the Berkey uh, to make it drinkable. But uh, it's just something I've learned. Stuff just ends up in rainwater, at least for me. And I'm no professional, I don't know what I'm doing. Algae, that's the word I was looking for earlier. <laughs> I said bacteria, but I was meaning algae. Algae ends up in the uh, in the barrels, even though I keep them pretty dark colored, painted black. Uh, just some algae just naturally ends up in them. And in the heat of the summer, that algae will just kind of expand a little bit. Now in these black barrels, or having keeping them dark like this, the algae doesn't get too bad. And the very first barrel though, seems to be the worst where you'll get uh, some pretty dark colored water and then the next barrel it feeds into, the water will be a lot more clear, and then the last two barrels, the water is almost always crystal clear. Uh, in fact, even though I know you can't, it looks like it'd be drinkable just right out of these. Obviously, I don't do that, but that's, I'm just kind of just trying to articulate how clear that water does come out. You know it's a cold day outside when the hose water feels warm <laughs> to your hands. All right, this is gonna be the dirty water here. <laughs> now spray it over there in the yard, please. I didn't see that one coming. So I don't know if you could see that or not, and you might not have, but a whole bunch of the gristle from the shingles came out of that last barrel. I mean, it was just a big sludge thing of it in the bottom of it. I don't want to say huge, but I mean, it was a, it was a decent little amount. That's not a desired effect, but unfortunately I have a shingled roof on my house. Now my retreat location, I'm going to be putting a, a metal building, or that's my plan anyways, a metal building with a metal roof. That way the rainwater that comes down off of that roof won't have the chemicals and whatever other bad stuff that's inside shingles. Now the Berkey water filter will filter that bad stuff out, but it's going to be hard on the filters or the elements themselves. So if I can uh, not have that, that would be best. All right, back to it. 
So I do use the Clorox cleanup with bleach when I wash these in the spring and then most of the time in the fall. Uh, and of course I realize that after SHTF you won't have cleaners like that available possibly, but I use it now. I think it helps a little bit. If I don't have it, I can still just manually scrub the uh, junk out of there, uh, no problem. I just like using this because hey, I can. Now one of the things I will do in late fall, super, or early winter, right before it starts really getting, uh, right before we start getting the uh, freezes, is these barrels I will uh, empty halfway, uh, like sometime in December. And then in January and February, we'll get, sometimes we'll get those deep freezes where it'll be uh, close to zero degrees Fahrenheit for you know, a week straight before we get a warming where it warms, actually warms up into the 20s or the, right before it gets dead of winter, I will empty these barrels halfway out. That way, when the water freezes and expands, it'll have a place to go inside of the barrel and it won't uh, break the barrel, it won't burst the bar uh, barrel. I made the mistake on that a couple years ago and just about ruined the barrel because the water froze, expanded in it, and actually expanded the barrel and uh, now I have a hard time because the bottom is kind of bowed. Instead of being flat, the bottom now is kind of bowed and the thing kind of almost wants to weeble wobble. So sometimes I got to shove a stick or something like that underneath it to even it out. Okay, you can see they fit together really super simple. Just a couple inches of uh, cut up hose in between each one. I've had people ask me, hey, why don't you put them down at the lower end where they all kind of fill up at once. Uh, this works great for me. That first barrel fills up and once it reaches the top, then it hits the hose and then it fills up the next level. And then uh, it'll feed into the next barrel and then to the fourth barrel. So each barrel fills up fully before it fills up the next barrel. Uh, one of the reasons I like that is the dirtiest water ends up in that very first barrel and then I've got three barrels of pretty darn clean water uh, that ends up with very little algae or very little just particles or junk or whatever in it. All right, let's get back to putting them back together. All right, it's not perfect. Not everything is watertight. I'll have a few slight leaks here and there, uh, but it's not a biggie. I live in an area where we get plenty of rain throughout the year. I mean, sometimes we'll get a month long drought during the dog days of summer, but generally during the springtime and the fall, we get, so much, we get more rain than what we usually know what to do with. I know I'm lucky, so it's not a big deal for me if a little bit of water leaks out at the connections or whatever, but, 50, 100, 150, 200, pretty close to 200 gallons of water. Uh, within the next couple days, I'll have 200, close to 200 gallons of water just in these four. And now I've got four more on the other side. We're gonna work on those now too. The bad thing about this time of year, it's warm enough for the grass to grow, but it's wet. It's too wet to actually mow it, so it feels like I'm walking through a jungle here. Now because this is the first barrel that feeds down from the first flush system, that barrel was the nastiest. I mean the water's not black, but it's definitely gray. It's not pretty. Nothing I would want nothing I'd want to drink without running through the Berkey first. Little stuff in there, not too bad. Definitely not nearly as gray. I mean, pretty clear water. You just see some junk floating on the bottom of that second barrel I just emptied out. Nothing that I would be afraid to run through a first filter of some kind, like through a towel or something, anything, before running it through my Berkey. So, I got these barrels with the removable tops from a local recycling company 
here in my uh, uh, the area that I live. I found him on Craigslist. I searched rain barrels on Craigslist and this local recycling company had a listing that they sold barrels that could be transferred into rain barrels. And then I asked him, hey, do you have any with these removable tops? <clears throat> and he said yes. So I went and bought eight of them. Actually, I bought more than eight of them, but I used eight of, I use eight of them in my, in my rain, rainwater catchment system. But these, uh, these ones with removable tops sure make cleaning these out twice a year, at least once a year, if not twice a year, a lot, lot easier. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that this is a perfect setup or the best setup or this is what you should do and that my setup's better than everybody else's. I'm saying, I am definitely not saying that. This setup that I built on both sides of my house, first time I ever built something like that and I am not a handy type of person. I made a lot of mistakes in building these. Um, like most things in my life, I've had, I have small window of opportunities to get them done. So I end up trying to do two or three projects in one day. I stayed on, when I built these, I started on that project kind of late in the day. I was working on them, on them in, on into the darkness and I didn't get stuff lined up just perfectly. I just, needless to say, I learned a lot on building these. And if I had the money, actually what I would do, if I had the money and the spare time, what I would actually do is I would go out and buy uh, eight more of these and uh, rebuild them uh, just so they would be a lot better done. Actually, if I had the money and the time, I might not even buy eight more of these. I might just buy a couple of those really big plastic uh, white totes that you see. All right, back to it. So that last barrel there, you can probably see how it's a little crooked. That was the one I didn't drain down far enough and during a during a deep freeze during the winter this is like two winters ago where the ice actually inside of it expanded so much it bowed the bottom of it out now it kind of wants to wobble like a teeter-totter or a wibble wobble or whatever those things are called so i don't know if you can see it down there it's a little piece of wood a little wedge of wood that i'll put underneath it to kind of help stabilize it i should replace it but it's working good enough and, you know, I don't drink this water. I've got tap water. I live in a home. <clears throat> I have tested this out. I have actually put this water into the Berkey and uh, tested it out and it comes out crystal clear and tasting perfect. What I mostly do with this water is water my gardens with. It gives me all the water I want and need and more to keep my garden watered. I honestly think these barrels would be, it might be tight, but I think with my family of three that we could have water for drinking, bathing, and watering the garden with if it came down to it. But if it came down to that, I ain't going to be here. I'll be at a prepper retreat location if we actually have to start drinking rain, rain water. All right, on to cleaning the last barrel now. Now some of you may ask, hey Ethical, if things get that bad, and if you're gonna go someplace else, why even have this type, type, type of stuff at your house? Why even garden? Uh, why have the Berkey at your house? And all that stuff like that is, um, for one, you never know what could happen. Uh, would do, you, do you even have a forewarning that you could go to a prepper retreat um, location? would you even be able to leave? So would I end up getting stuck here while my plans are to go to elsewhere? Would I get stuck here? And then the other thing too is, this kind of stuff is practice for me. Um, I learned how to build them. I know how I'll do my next one, so I'll have a better idea of what to do next time. My next time I do this, it will be better. So again, it's just good practice for me. Um, just when you do stuff more on a daily basis, you just get better at it, you fine tune it, and it will work better for you after SHTF. So real quick, just how my super simple system, <laughs> super simple system works. Rain goes down into the uh, uh, gutter, down in the downspout, and then 
the first rain that comes down, the first few minutes of rain that comes down, actually goes down into this first flush system. If you're interested in that first flush system, I'll have a link to it down below where you can get it. I like it. I mean, it does pretty good. As the rain fills up, that first bit of rain that's going to be dirty, that's going to have all the junk from the uh, that's on the roof in it, down here at the bottom, it's a little drip. And what it is is more water, you know, when you get a good rain, more water is going into this than what's, uh, than what's being dripped out. So when it stops raining, this just drips out and just empties out all the rest of the way. But anyway, so you get the first rain, the bad, the really uh, dirty water gets into here first, and then as this fills up, there's a little uh, ball that floats in this. And as that ball reaches right here, that stops it. As that water, dirty water, pushes up and pushes that ball, that stops it. And then your rain now comes this way down into your water barrel. So then, as this water bar barrel fills up with water, as this would fill up with water, as the barrel itself filled up with water, then it would reach this and then feed over to this barrel. And then as this barrel fills up with water, and then when it reaches this, then it just feeds over into this barrel. And again, as this water barrel fills up, then it just feeds over into this final barrel. So very simple system, not the best system, not perfect by any means, but it works. Come this summer, when it gets warmer out and more sunny out, I will take some black spray paint and I will retouch this up. So these are back to uh, all black again. When you have these being all black, it really helps to keep the algae down. When you keep the sunlight out, that helps keep the algae down. Also too here, where I mentioned earlier that I was, you know, when I originally built these, I was trying to do this in the dark and I was in a hurry. This is a result of me misgaging where that should have been. That's how bad of a job I did. This one, and then also this one. This plug and this plug and this. Now, when the water gets up really high up here, it's kind of nice because you can just turn this on. And uh, I need to tighten that in. But anyways, a sloppy job I did. I did not know what I was doing. Plus, I was doing it in a hurry. Plus, I was doing it in the dark. It's all lessons that we learn. And with the 200 gallons of, close to 200 gallons of water here on this side of the house, and pretty close to 200 gallons of water on that side of the house, between the both of them, 400 gallons of water pretty much all the time. Pretty close to 400 gallons of water all the time. We get uh, numerous rains a year, so even if we have a hot couple of weeks, and I use up quite a bit of water in gardening and whatever else, <clears throat> usually within a couple of weeks, we'll get a good downpour, and it just takes one decent downpour to get these uh, bad boys filled up. I expect within a week, uh, I will have these all four, all eight of these barrels will be filled up completely. And if you would like to see a SHTF World Without Rule of Law short story where you choose what actions you want the character to take by clicking on the screen, then click on the link that should be appearing on the top of the screen just about now to learn some valuable survival skills for when the collapse happens. And to see a video that tells you step by step of how you can find and join a pre-existing prepper group that already has its own bug out location, then click on the video that should be appearing on the right side of the screen just about now. Anyways folks, if you made it this far, hey, thank you very much for watching, and I pray that you have a good night.